this is the product of boredom and not having a job. Hey, what's up you guys? It's Avery, welcome back to the channel. If you've never been here before, welcome, glad you're here. So, as the title says, today, I'm doing a little 24 hour readathon. I'm gonna see how many books I can read in 24 hours. Why? I don't know. I'll be honest, I don't know if I have the stamina for this. I don't know if I have the reading stamina, the mind stamina. I could very well give up on this in like two hours, but I'm trying to stay positive. And the way that I think I'm going to successfully read a lot of books is by reading some short ones, okay? I went to my library yesterday and picked up three books, real shorties, love that. Another thing that I think will be helpful for this 24 hour readathon is having a variety of different books to read because if I read the same type of books, I'll definitely get bored. So I'm trying to switch it up a little bit. And all the books I'm gonna mention here, I'm not sure if I'm gonna read all of them, but these are just the ones that I'm thinking of. So the next one I got from the library is Daisy Miller by Henry James. Literally never heard of it before seeing it in the library, but it's about a girl named Daisy Miller. She's a young American woman, and she kind of like deliberately flouts social conventions. And people are like, is she doing it on purpose or is she just ignorant of, you know, social conventions? It's just a short little book and says it's his first great portrayal of an enigmatic and independent American woman. So, all right, sounds good to me. Next up, we also have The Uncommon Reader by Alan Bennett. I'm probably going to read this one first because it's so cute. Like the premise of it is so cute. It basically says when her corgis stray into a mobile library parked near Buckingham Palace, the queen feels duty bound to borrow a book. And she's abetted in her newfound obsession by Norman, a young man from the royal kitchens. So basically he like recommends her books and she's like, these are good. It's also just a short little book. That's a cute premise. I like that. Next up we have The Great Gatsby. I just recently bought myself a physical copy of this because I've never owned one. Also a short book, which I haven't read since like high school. And I kind of just want a refresher on the book. I know what happens in the book, but it's been a while since I read it. So maybe I'll pick that one up. I don't know. And then three that are available on Libby, which I might get to is Elevation by Stephen King, which is, I, I literally can't remember what the premise is. So I will tell you if I actually read it, but I've never read anything by Stephen King before. So I thought that that would be kind of a fun thing for today because, you know, we're having a variety of things today. And then along with that theme of things I've never really dived into before, we also have The Mysterious Affair at Styles by Agatha Christie. And this is her first book of the Pierrot series. So seen the movies, but haven't read anything by Agatha Christie before. So this is another short one, but a good one. So I thought that'd be a fun way to kind of dive into murder mysteries. And then lastly, we have Animal Farm by George Orwell. I didn't like 1984, I didn't finish it. So I don't know, I kind of am afraid of Animal Farm, especially cause like the premise seems weird, but like, I don't know, I've heard it's good. So maybe I'll give that one a try too. So those are kind of the ones I'm maybe planning on, but I'm also kind of insane and might just take something off of my shelf. But it is 9.45 a.m., and obviously, and I think I'm going to commence this readathon at 10 because I need to kind of do some things before I get started and let this consume my entire day. Basically, I just need to eat breakfast. That's it. That's what I need to do. I will keep you guys updated as I read and as I decide if I'm going to continue with this. If you're watching this video, then that's a telltale sign that I continued it. Another essential for a 24 hour readathon is hammock. Let the readathon commence. Okay, so I've just finished The Uncommon Reader. I enjoyed it. I wasn't like obsessed with it, but it was a nice short read. It was just really interesting. And it was interesting to see the queen, even though this is fictional, but to see a queen who is so removed from reality learn about what pe 
people are like and then in turn we see her become more empathetic and she even notices that in herself in things that she wouldn't have normally noticed she's like huh maybe books are making me a more empathetic person which you know they do that something a little random tidbit she refers to herself when she's speaking as one so instead of saying like i should go to the store one should go to the store and one should read a book about blah 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 but she's talking about herself and I, that was interesting i didn't know that like the royals did that but i looked it up and apparently they do kind of like how they use the royal we she talked about how she was a doer and how though she loved reading reading is a passive hobby which i feel that like sometimes i feel like reading is the opposite of living instead of going and doing things you're sitting and reading about other people doing things and I've like felt that struggle in my life before but I feel like it's not a big enough concern that it will make me stop reading it's just kind of something interesting to think about and how you just need a balance it's not like you know I'm gonna live my entire life cooped up reading while other people are out having experiences that's where that becomes a problem but I do understand a little bit of what, what she talks about here and feeling like there's a lot you can learn from reading but it's also you have to apply it to your life and then go do things with that knowledge so I think that's important and I it was interesting reading about it because I've had those thoughts before but I've never read about other people having those thoughts so I, I definitely appreciated that but yeah it was cute it was funny it kind of gave you a little inside look into what royal life is like as an American, I don't know much about it. it. Makes me glad I'm not royalty, as much as that would be great. Just all of the restrictions on their lives are insane. And the fact that her advisors literally had an issue with her reading, like, not for me, not for me. I don't know what I'm gonna pick up next. I've discovered that I think that it's not that my mind doesn't have the stamina to read. Like, I could read pages in a story all day it's that my body gets restless like I can only sit in one place for a certain amount of time and then I have to get up and move so I'm sure this vlog I'm gonna be all over the place first I was outside now I'm inside I'll probably move to my room and I think I'm going to attempt to read standing up or moving a little bit because that'll make me feel like I'm not just like laying around all day being lazy because I do start to get really restless. Okay, next up, I'm gonna go in on Daisy Miller. Even though when I opened it to the first page, like the first page was one entire paragraph. Like just an entire paragraph of text. So that's not promising. I kind of hate that. But I'm not gonna be a snob. I'm just gonna go for it. And yeah, I'm gonna go ahead and start that one. Let's do it. This is kind of a new angle, but we're going with it. I'm about halfway through Daisy Jones. Wait, is that the right name? No. Daisy Miller. Really enjoying it so far, actually. Kind of surprised. I don't know why. Maybe I went into it with a bad attitude, but really enjoying it so far. Um, I just took a little breaky break, ate some Takis, kind of rejuvenated me a little bit. Now I think I'm going to do some jumping jacks to kind of get my blood moving again. And then I'm going to keep reading. I think I'm going to attempt to read standing up because I'm getting antsy. I'm getting antsy. I'm getting antsy. I just finished Daisy Miller. I really enjoyed this. Um, like I said, I wasn't... I don't know why I like, went into it thinking I wasn't going to like it. I don't know why. It's actually really easy to follow. I think with a lot of classic books, you're like, this is going to be hard to read, but this one wasn't at all. It was really easy to follow. Um, the characters were interesting. Daisy was a really interesting character. It really reminded me of Sense and Sensibility. Daisy reminded me of Marianne a lot. And then Giovanelli reminded me of Willoughby a little bit. Not a lot. He wasn't like quite as sucky as Willoughby, but it's still kind of like the same vibes with Winterborn acting like a Colonel Brandon and just like looking out for Daisy the whole time. Um, so yeah, it was an interesting short little read. 
interesting to read about the manners and like societal customs of different places during the late 1800s and how it was such a big deal the way that Daisy acted and how those actions eventually became to be her downfall not directly but indirectly which was really interesting so yeah good little book I enjoyed it I'm gonna take a break from reading I've only read two books it's three o'clock I've read two but I'm getting restless I kind of want to get out of the house so I might go do something I don't know what shop it maybe break over I'm back so I just went to this antique store that I love and didn't film in there because I'm a bad YouTuber. Recently I've been picking up things to go in my future apartment once I move out of this apartment. And I saw this really pretty print the last time I was in the store. But I am not an impulse buyer, like at all. If I like something, I will take a picture of it and I will leave the store. And then I will look back on the picture of it over the next few days and then if it's something I still really want that I have to go back and buy it, then I'll get it. Because I am super, super stingy. Like I don't spend money. I hate to do it. And so that's what I have to do. And so I did that for this print and I think it was worth it. There's a bit of a glare because of the plastic, but it's this really pretty Japanese print. And it's just like, I love it. I love the colors in it. It's beautiful. So I'm not going to hang it up. I'm pretty much just going to put it in the pile of things that I've been accumulating for my future apartment. I am feeling tired. I don't know why. I didn't really do anything today besides lay around and read and then do that. It's five o'clock. So I'm going to keep up the reading. I'm going to get something to eat, make myself something to eat because I'm hungry. And then we're going to keep going. I'm not sure what I'm going to read next. I haven't decided if it's going to be the Stephen King story or if it's going to be The Great Gatsby. Sorry for any weird lighting, but it's like nearing sunset, so this is what we're working with. But I am one chapter of the way into The Great Gatsby, and this book is literally just classic. Like, I'm only one chapter in, and I'm already like, I just remember why this story is so enigmatic, why it just draws you in, and... It's just good. Those are my intelligent thoughts about it. It's just good. Yeah. Hey y'all. <laughs> Alyssa's back. I'm back. Woo! They loved me. <laughs> You guys loved her. Mm -hmm. What can we say? Give the people what they want. <laughs> More Alyssa. <laughs> okay, just finished The Great Gatsby. I mean, it's a good book. Like, it's good. I'm way too tired to probably give any coherent thoughts about the book. It's really interesting to read. <laughs> There's a lot of really important lessons in it about greed, about wealth, about the American dream, about holding on to the past, about hope, about so many things. Really my biggest takeaway is that I want to watch the movie. So it is 10.45 p.m. I am done reading for the night. I've been reading all day. I've been doing other things as well. But I literally cannot read a single word or I will just, my brain will melt and leak out my ears. Ew, that was kind of gross, but that's true. It's the way I'm feeling. I'm thinking I might get up and read another book in the morning. Oh, that's going to be hard to do. But I might do it. Okay, I might. Tonight, I am going to lay in bed and watch YouTube because I need to not use my brain for a good little while. But today has been a successful day. Three books, 
just kind of crazy, like, the more I think about it. I mean, they're not terribly long books at all, but they, you know, I spent a lot of the day reading. I will update you guys tomorrow morning. Good night, America. And other countries. The good night world. Okay, you guys. It's the next day. It's a little before 10. It's almost 10. I'm done with my 24-hour reading challenge. I didn't get up this morning to read. I woke up at like 8, so I had two hours. I potentially could have read another book, but I just couldn't do it. I really didn't want to. I started Elevation by Stephen King last night when I was laying in bed, just on my Kindle, and I actually like was intrigued by it, so I do want to read that, but I can't get it in under the 24 hours. I was just so exhausted from reading, which was such an interesting feeling because I've never read at that kind of like extended length of time. This was an interesting experiment for me to do. I'm glad I did it, but I can safely say like I didn't really enjoy it because I felt like the reading was a chore because I was trying to fit in as many books as I can under 24 hours instead of just reading a book and like really enjoying it. So I wanted to keep reading. It was like I have to keep reading so that I can finish it and get to another book. So I would say that this was a fun video to do and it tested the limits of my reading stamina, but probably won't do another like it for a while because it really made reading feel like a chore, which I didn't love. But I enjoyed all three of the books that I read. I talked a little bit about The Great Gatsby last night, but now that I'm a little more awake, I can... I mean, I still don't even have much to say. It's just a short book and it's really well written. The characters are compelling, the setting is interesting, the themes are interesting, the plot, like it's a, just a good book. I feel like most people have read it or know the plot because of school or having seen the movie or whatever, but it, it lives up to the hype. That's all I've got to say. So I hope you enjoyed this 24 hour reading challenge, seeing how many books I could read in 24 hours. I only read three, which is not like a lot, I'm aware, but it was hard. Even if you love to read, like you really don't realize how tiring it can be to just do that all day long. And so it was an interesting experience, but a good one. Before I wrap this video up, I also want to shout out Ana Luisa. I'm a big fan of Ana Luisa the company. They have really amazing jewelry. This necklace, which I love, I wear in like all my videos. And these really pretty earrings that I just recently got from them. I teamed up with Ana Luisa in my last video to bring you guys a discount. So be sure to check the link in my description if you want to browse their website and use my code AVERY10 to get 10% off of your purchase. I'm a big, big fan of their jewelry. It's very high quality and love, love, love. So definitely make sure to take advantage of that. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to give it a thumbs up and also subscribe if you want to see more videos from me. Be sure to follow me on Instagram, my new Instagram page recently launched and I post updates there on what I'm reading and stuff like that. So that is also linked in the description. Thank you so much for watching. You guys have stuck with me through this 24 hours and I appreciate it. Love you for that. I will see you guys in my next video. Bye.